There we go. Right. So we are going to talk about Ashitano Jo. Um, have you ever been to? And I'm talking with uh, George Sears. Is there anything that you're working on that you want to promote or something like that? Uh, at the moment, no. At the moment, no. Really. I see. Have you uh, have you ever been to a to a real so so? Uh, for those who don't know, Ashitano Jo is a is a manga and anime about boxing. Um. C- can you remember, by the way, when it came out? I mean, uh, if I, w- I would have to say, probably in the late sixties, it started out. I see. Yeah, I believe. I see. Yeah. So, have you been to a to a real boxing match? <laughs> uh, no, real boxing match. Although I have actually watched. I do actually watch occasionally boxing or MMA. I see, I see. I, I tried watching, uh, I think that there was a a match maybe a month ago or something with some, somebody called Fury fighting a, a black guy uh, a bot, in a boxing match. I don't know if you saw that. Um... <laughs> yeah, to be honest, uh, the, the few times that I've tried watch, watching uh, boxing, uh, um, I c- couldn't, I, I didn't know, like, why somebody, wa- like, how the points were given. So, yeah, I, because obviously it's, it's not like, <laughs> it's not like in Ashitano Joe that, that every match, um, every fight ends up with a KO, right? <laughs> Um, <laughs> it depends on the boxing style as well, and also depends on what type of boxer you are. I mean, I would say Joe is more of a slugger or an end boxer, so he would be for KO. A boxer would be someone who just puts their distance and just punches through and through. Hmm. Would you say that most of Joe's opponents were uh, sluggers as well, or...? Uh, for the most part, I would say the only exception would probably be Jose. He is a uh, pretty much an outboxer. I see. Um, I mean, I th- I think uh, the manga at least I can't remember the anime, but in the manga at least uh, it's peppered th- throughout with um, references here and there to real boxing and re- real boxers. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, how did you find out about Ashitano Joe? Uh, funny thing that you mentioned it. So, I watched first the Megalo Boxing. Just like, oh, it's pretty good. So I watched the YouTube. So I decided to go on YouTube. And then there's one video that's literally an hour long. It's called Every Ashitano Joe Reference in Megalo Boxing. And immediately figured, oh, what's this? anime slash manga nice nice uh in in my case well it basically aired on italian television and I, like um because it aired on television sometimes i would catch an episode here and there but uh, I, like i didn't like i was only like uh, six or seven years old not younger so i couldn't really follow um the story, especially given that I watched some episodes here and there, and but, but what I what I do remember is that uh, they also showed, um, you know, ads for it. Um, yeah, I, and well, it it was there at the back of my mind for a long time, and I finally did watch it. Um, and it it was pretty good. So you have read both. Yeah, you have read the manga and you've watched the anime. Which of the two do you prefer? To be quite honest, I can't really say because I consider them both to be as equally good. To be quite honest, hmm. I see. I I personally feel like I enjoyed the anime more, but I watched the anime first, so maybe. Uh, so maybe I'm biased, like most people are biased towards the thing which they see first. Um, I mean, usually people say that uh, the source material 
because this this was originally a manga which was adapted to an anime so people usually prefer um the the source material but i i came across the anime first i guess um, one of the things which i remember um uh, back when i first started watching the anime before i started watching it i uh, just looked at some reviews and stuff and people were saying well the, the first season in particular has some rough animation but it's it's all right if you once you get used to it uh, did you feel like that too yeah i would describe it as a good story with a uh, 60 spiderman animation uh so so you mentioned uh, megalobots i uh so so basically i, I had watched joe before i have before the megalobots came out and well when i did see some clips on youtube and all that i don't know it just looked a bit silly because i don't know when they using mechanical arms or something <laughs> um as there was some steampunk thing in there going in there or, or maybe i'm just uh, misremembering uh, megalobots oh well that's one of their gears so i guess the whole premise of megalobox is just you're basically using a uh, boxing with i won't say full power armor but it's just imagine your arms having some kind of power armor mm. i mean how is it compared to joe uh well i would say joe is a lot better but i still enjoyed it i see. um i i guess um given that you're talking about similar anime another anime which usually comes up um when talking about jo like you know a uh, recommendation is uh, um hajime no ippo if i'm not mistaken yeah that's the one um have you seen it heard of it i've seen it uh five years ago the thing that i remembered most is the main protagonist is very timid and kind of weak willed but apparently he's very good at boxing i see i mean how is it compared to joe well i personally prefer joe as the main protagonist towards ipo and mm, i would say the difference is ipo is more you know you learn boxing through and through it's more knowledgeable joe feels like someone who is a fan of the sport but is not particularly like i would say an expert i see so i so i guess uh, um hajime no e plays more about the tactics uh or something like that whereas i guess um ashita ashita no joy is more about uh the i don't know the emotions or the drama and or something like that and uh, like you're, you're not going to learn that much about bot saying uh, i mean I, i remember when i watched the anime uh, there was a bit where like joe jo was just defeating um uh, character after uh, bots after bots uh, we just cross counters um so i mean i i guess i mean uh, which approach do you prefer though i mean W- would you agree with what i said that uh, ashiran ashiran jo is more about the drama or rather yeah. than yeah i see yeah i would agree considering that boxing is sort of a secondary compared to you know it's a story about joe i guess it's kind of a coming age story about joe himself Yes, I think the problem which I have with a lot of uh, sports manga and all that um, is because I usually don't like sports manga. I don't know about you. Do you like sports manga usually? Uh aside from a few, not really. Yeah, I mean, I, I the problem which I have with a lot of sports sports manga is that they, they kind of turn into like propaganda for like the sport um that, that that they are talking about like it it's the best thing ever um the most complicated thing ever and, and <laughs> it, it's kind of funny because you kind of get the same feeling like in every 
uh, in so many like sports, sports uh, manga and stuff. Uh, I guess um, um, a recent sports manga, which is also more about the drama, would be Ping Pong. Uh, I think it was called. I think that was the title. Um, the one with a bit of a weird animation style and all that. But I, I don't know. I, I, it felt like there were too many. I, have you watched Ping Pong, by the way? Uh, I have not watched it, but the same director, I've seen a few of his works, so I know his bit of his style. Uh, wh- what was the director? Wh- what else did he direct? I can't remember. Uh, he did a Devil Man Cry, maybe. He did... Uh, I forget what it's called, but it's it's basically about a relationship between a man and... A girl who, well, so the premise is the man is under an organization that fights ogres that pose as humans. And I see. Uh, see, it, it, it's the same guy who directed. Uh, um, I think it's uh, Kaiba. So I think his his name is Yuasa, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't like Yuasa stuff, and I didn't like Ping Pong. Um, and I really hated that. Uh, uh, I think it was called Kemono Zume or something like that. The, 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 uh, the, that's the one I was talking about. Yeah, yeah I really hate, hated that one. It was awful. Um, yeah, uh, I think uh, the problem with Ping Pong is that uh, m- maybe, I don't know, maybe it doesn't focus on the sport enough. Like there are too many characters. Whereas here it's all about Joe, right? Uh, I, I don't know, I kind of get the feeling with a lot of old anime that um, um, even Dragon Ball, uh, that they have uh, the main character sent, sent, I mean, not not all anime, not all old, old anime, uh, for example, something like Macross has a large cast of characters and it focuses on all, all of them, but, but I guess in this case, like, um, like you, you have literally, literally got the name of the character in the in the title, so yeah, it's all about him. Um, let's see, where do, where do we go from here now? Um, so I personally preferred uh, the anime. I, I don't know, the manga felt fast. I mean, obviously, it's, it's a manga, so you can read it faster. Um, and all that. I imagine it took you uh, much less time to read the manga than to watch the anime, right? Yeah, well, I would say the, mm, yes in a way, but the thing that I have to warn you about is, especially the site that I read, sometimes the chapters are literally just volume, so imagine chapter 108 is just volume 20. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I think the site which I read it on um, was manga that's and. I I thought that I would be able to make it. So so basically, I read up to chapter sixty something. Um, but I and there are hundred eight chapters. But I wasn't able to because I don't know. I felt like the chapters got longer or something. Um, and also, if you're go, if you're going to try to go and read the manga, be warned that um, for some reason I think it's it has been translated by different translation groups. So. For the first few chapters, you read it from left to right. Um, I think like a n- normal Western book, which means that uh, basically what they have done is just mirrored um, the manga on the other side for some reason. Um, I, yeah, I mean, and there were a lot of uh, mistakes as well. I mean, I, th- I think it's a couple of, or maybe even three different groups which tra- translated it, three different pen translation groups. I have, I don't, I wasn't able to find some kind of an official translation anywhere. It was just fan translated, and and, and there were quite a few bit of mis- spelling mistakes uh, here and there as well. Um, let's see. I think we can finish talking about the manga with my. I guess my last last thought on it um, was that um, the paneling. Um, felt a lot. Um, uh, I guess you. I don't want to make it say it as a negative thing, but I guess uh, less dynamic. Like, uh, like, uh, like, like most most of the things, most of the panels were just bots. 
uh rectangles very simplistic um i i don't know i, I thought that you know, the art uh, looked a bit um, more cartoony than the average anime these days but this is both a bad thing and a good thing it's it's a good thing because all the characters look different like if you were to swap hairs between like between the the character the hair styles between the characters um you would still be able to tell them apart which is not the case with a lot of uh, modern anime and manga oh absolutely um, not but, but at the same time it's um <laughs> i don't know like some, some characters did look a little bit deformed um but i i guess that's the price you have to pay um like uh, like in a lot of western cartoons um you can tell the characters i mean it's not as bad as a lot of western cartoons but in a lot of western cartoons um like you you can tell the the characters apart but they are so different from each other that it makes you like wonder like like why are they even in the in the same world um it's not that bad or anything like that um so i guess um differences to finish off uh, about the manga uh, difference what differences did you notice between the manga and the anime uh, george hmm let me see. i guess i would say the biggest difference is in the beginning of i would say chapter 1 or chapter 20 when yoko's introduced in the anime she's basically in the slums giving out candy and it starts with the whole joe is base, basically well and in the manga, she's introduced in, literally in the courthouse. I mean, they te- Joe basically scams Yoko, but in the anime's case, he does it directly by literally posing as an orphanage in her mansion. Whereas in the manga, it's just, oh, a random donation. Some random donor has donated Joe. And oh no, this is the person that uh, donated to Joe. How dare you? Yeah, I preferred I personally preferred um the way that she was introduced in the in the anime. In, in the manga it felt like a bit like why did she bother coming to the trial? I mean, I guess like I don't know, um uh, like I don't know. I I preferred preferred it in, in the in the anime. Maybe maybe it's because um when they made the anime they they already knew that um yoko was going to be an important character um whereas maybe in the manga i don't know oh, th- what about you did you have a preference for the way that it was done uh i would say in this case i would prefer the anime because it i don't know i get in the end yoko's kind of a important character but to be honest, it, it made way more sense that Joe would just personally scam her. In the anime, it's figured, oh, this person is a phony, let's scam her. So is that the only, uh, only major change you noticed? Uh, no. I would say the biggest one is in the second part of the anime, Joe gets the the one of the world titles, whereas in the manga, he stays in the Pacific. And also the part in the the manga where he's fighting Dragon Kim. In the manga, they already have their new boxing gym. In the anime, it's back to the old slum boxing gym. Yeah, I, I see, I see. Um, and I guess in these cases, which do you prefer, the, ma- the manga or the anime overall, I guess? Uh, I guess... In the Yoko's case, I would say the anime. In the other case, hmm, it's hard to really say. I mean, they're, that one has the same event. It's just told in a different way. I see. Um, I see. So uh, the anime is divided into two seasons. Um, I, I don't think we need to worry about spoilers. I mean, the, yeah, absolutely yeah. not. I mean, if you're watching a YouTube uh, podcast about Joe, expect a lot of spoilers. 
I mean, uh, what about you? Did you have any spoilers when you started uh, watching the anime? Um, I would say some plot points here and there, but nothing major like for Casey's death or Joe's death or I guess in the manga it's more ambiguous whether he died, which I do believe he died. I see. So, um, other than Megalobots, did you know about, uh, I, I guess, the uh, uh, about the ref the references, or rather, did you did you know about any any other references um, from Joe in other anime like uh, Garan Lagan or whatever, or, or were there any cases in which like um, you only realized that it was a reference afterwards after you watched Joe? Oh, if I that you mentioned it, I did uh, watch a YouTube video where it just comp where it just compiles all the issues and no Joe references, and I noticed a lot of them reference the ending, and some of them reference the cross counter, but most of them are just literally the ending. Yeah, I, I think I think I watched Garen Liga before I watched uh, Joe, so I didn't. I didn't really know that uh, any of those things, like the cross counter, or, or the pigs, um, or um, or the death, uh, like that, they were any, any references to Joe. So I, I guess that's uh, that's a little pleasure that you can guess <laughs> by, <laughs> by watching watching Ashton Joe. Um, I mean, but but. Um, at the, at the same time, I, like I kind of um, so I've been I've been watching um, Gundam, uh, UC Gundam, um, the past few weeks, and I basically watched all the old school uh, Gundam uh, uh, UC timeline, Universal Century timeline anime, and I must admit that uh, some of it did feel like uh, <laughs> like like an like an unpaid job. Like uh, okay, uh, I'm into anime, so like, and I'm talking about anime, so I the, I need to watch, I need to watch Gundam, um, because you know it's it's because it's important, uh, uh, but because of, like obviously like a lot of anime were affected by um uh, by Gundam, but I didn't feel like it was it was a job like an unpaid job when watching uh, Joe. Um, it was a pleasure. Um, but but more than that, I th I think what I want to ask is so uh, Gundam had a huge influence. It basically started a subgenre, a real robot anime. Um, but what about a Ashita no Joe? Like I kind of feel like other than the reference, I mean, mm, th there's a couple of um. Botsing anime like Hajime no Ippo and um, Megalobots, which obviously was affected by Joe. But other than that, um, I, I guess like you are more likely to come across um, a Gundam fan because there's more stuff which came out of it than an Ashira no Joe fan. Um, what do you think? What effects do you think Ashira no Joe? Had on anime, if any. Uh, I don't know so much about anime. Maybe it's true about anime or manga, but I would say with Joe, it sort of inspired the whole shonen genre in a way. Because, you know, the thing that Joe is known for is that he's very stubborn and he refuses to stand up. So, the gist of it is, Joe kind of kickstarted the whole shonen or battle shonen genre and if you take out all the magic or superpowers it's sort of it's sort of similar in a way i see so would you say that uh, joe is basically your average shonen protagonist uh no not quite <laughs> he's better <laughs> yeah um i yeah obviously but um so I guess uh, he has been copied, but uh, not exceeded. Um, let's see. I, I guess from what I've heard, um, Joe was basically one of the early manga and anime 
uh, that was like, okay, this is for, uh, it's not just for kids. Um, it's for adults too. Um, like, an, like an adult can watch this as well and, and enjoy it. It's not like Astro Boy or something. Um, and I, I guess, I guess, I mean, obviously, it's, I mean, which age group do you think Joe is aimed at? You said earlier that it is shonen, so would you say that it's aimed at that demographic the most, or is it more like a seinen, or, uh, yeah, what do you think? Uh, there's some instances where I can understand it's for teens or young kids, but there's others where it's just, oh, <laughs> it's kind of hard because... It's the same. It's the same anime slash manga where Dragon Kim basically murders his fa- accidentally murders his father for food. So it's it's hard to really say. I see. Uh, because uh, like I I kind of get the like because I don't know like a lot of the characters looked older than they were, especially at the start. I think by the end. Um, Joe is an adult and all that, but I, but I think at the start he's like fifteen years old, and all like all, all the inmates at uh, the juvenile prison he ends up as uh, are supposed to be like like fourteen, thirteen yeah. uh, years old. Did, 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 did I, I don't I don't know like did they look older than that to you as well, or is it just me? Uh, no, it's me as well. And in fact, it's kind of surprising that. Rikishi's in juvenile prison. He looks thirty years old. Yeah, yeah. I, so I, I think. I mean, I guess it was necessary for the plot, but I think it was kind of, um, kind of forced forced in because, um, like for example, I think the reason why the little kids are there, uh, is so that uh, you know, is because there are little kids watching. Um, watching the anime because other than that did, did you feel like this played any other major role or important role did, like would it make any big difference if the little kids were removed for example uh, to be honest not really I mean I would say the only purpose those kids have is just I guess sort of the audience's reaction I don't know yeah, yeah. So, so it's basically like, uh, just like those uh, kids are looking up to Joe. Like, oh, one day maybe I'll, I'll be like him. Uh, the kids watching are supposed to self-insert into those kids looking up at Joe. Um, like, well, when I'm 15 years old, I'm going to be like like Joe too or something. Um, yeah, and and I think um, uh, yeah, the the, the fact that Riki Ishi is in um the juvenile prison even though he looks like he's in his 30s um i th- i uh, i didn't notice it as much in the manga maybe because it's just in black and white but uh, in the anime i th- you do visibly see uh characters like especially yoko uh looks older by the end right she looks like a grown like she looks like a teenager at the start and like a grown woman by the end yeah um uh, the old man remains the same. Um, I mean, what's the what's the time span of the story anyway? Ten years? I th- no, mm. probably much less, right? I'd say a few years. I see. Um, well, yeah, around five years or something like that. I would say. Um, let's see. So, um, what I. Did Rikishi die in season one, or was it two? I can't remember now. Uh, it's both. I mean, season one, it's basically in the middle, Rikishi dies. In season two, he dies at the beginning. What do you mean? I can't remember. So, how it works is that since there's 59 episodes, after 55, it so Rikishi's death starts at 54... And in season two, it basically picks up after f- episode fifty-four of season one. I see. I see. 
No, nah, it's been a while since I watched it. Um, because I, I guess the reason why I asked is because um, I re- I remember that uh, when that happened, when Rikishi's death happened, and I didn't know about it. Um, I th- I think more people know about uh, know about just that than Rikishi's death because just that uh, gets um, gets referenced more. And uh, yeah, um, one last point about um, about I guess the, the demographic at uh, of the at which this was aimed at. Um, so when it comes to the ending, uh, Joe's death, I remember reading that the that the mangaka, the author, said that, um, uh, like, basically, when you watch, uh, uh, when you watch Joe uh, when you're younger, um, you can you can think that uh, uh, Joe didn't really die. He, he was just sitting there <laughs> with a satisfied um, <laughs> smile on his face but w- once you're older um, then you will think that uh, Joe died so as you can see he's trying to kind of placate both um, audiences sort of I guess yeah, um, yeah. and uh, by the way uh, given that we mentioned Rikishi is that uh, Apparently, in Japan, uh, the fans of the manga uh, did a, did like a mock funeral for Rikishi. <laughs> um, you probably already heard of that, yeah. I think oh, yeah, uh, yeah. a lot of reviewers um, do mention that. Yeah, uh, I guess uh, I was kind of worried uh, after Rikishi's death um, about uh, what, what is what are the what is going to happen. It's is there. I mean. What else is there to go to go on? Uh, is the finale going to live up to <laughs> uh, live up to this point in the story? And obviously it did. But in in between uh, the finale and um, uh, and Rikishi's death, did you feel like th- there were any moments where like it just became a bit samey or something like that? Or did you enjoy it? Or did you not feel that? Uh... <clears throat> can't really say. I would say I enjoyed it through and through, so I would say mm-hmm. not. I see. I, I, I was thinking mostly of like um, uh, when there was this arc in the anime when Yoko would just uh, like keep on getting stronger uh, fighters for um, for Joe to fight. And uh, like for example, I think that there was one in which there was one fighter who jumped around uh, the ring like a monkey, and I thought that like okay, this is this is just bloat. Um, I don't know if you remember that one. Um, well, oh yeah, that surprisingly enough, that's both in the anime and manga. Yeah, yeah I, th- that's that's what, what I was trying to like uh, get you to. Kind of getting at uh, when I asked you, like, w- what was the difference between the manga and the anime? Because I, obviously, I didn't get to that point in the manga, and I was wondering whether, like, this was just uh, a silly anime original. But no, apparently, it's there in the manga as well. I see. Well, to be fair, the reason why she did that is she she noticed Joe isn't her Joe isn't his usual wild self. He's just like, oh, what's going up? This guy, he's a he's a husk of himself. I see. I see. Yeah, I think I've reached the point where he can only do body blows because uh, he killed the uh, Rikishi by hitting him in the head. Um, I I did like that. Uh, this was basically based on something which ki- which happened, but then I guess it's not that rare for people to die while doing uh, boxing. Um, oh, absolutely the- not. Uh, let's see. So, uh, who, who was best girl? What was it, Noriko or Yoko? <laughs> mm, I would say probably Noriko. Noriko, Yoko is just very manipulative. I see. Um, did you did you also hit? Um, did, did you feel like um, um, Joe was justified to hit? <laughs> Yoko, um, at the start when they first met. Yeah, one hundred percent, because 
Joe doesn't really care. Joe notices that Yoko is just doing it for, you know, selfish reasons, just being fake. So he he can tell, he can immediately tell she was just bullshitting. Mm. I mean, I I think, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I was uh, like, when reading the, reading the manga, I was kind of laughing out loud when, like, I, I think... Uh, uh, like when Yoko came to the prison to do the play, and they were doing, I think, the Hunchback of Notre Dame or something, and <laughs> I don't know, like uh, she she was actually she was Yoko was playing um, uh, the gypsy woman who who is kind and helps everyone, <laughs> and, and and right before that, right before that. Uh, <laughs> They got um, uh, the coach Denpei or whatever Tenge or whatever uh, to to play the the hatchback, but but on, but only for the scene that yeah, he gets whipped. Uh, yeah, um, that, I don't know. I just found it a bit funny um, because obviously proved that what Joe was saying is right. That like uh, I don't know. I like I don't think. Maybe she wasn't conscious of it that uh, it looked that way that uh, she was just uh, doing stuff to look like a good person or something. Um, let's see. Where do we go? go from there? What did you think of um, the prison arc? Like, did you? Well, it's not a real prison; it's a juvenile prison or whatever. Yeah. Um, I, I see. I guess. Um, I I guess I'll say my thoughts first. I I I didn't I didn't expect th- that scene when Nishi was introduced uh, to be <laughs> to be that brutal. To be honest, so basically when uh, Joyce had the rehabilitation center. Um. But by the way, do you think do you think that Joe basically de- deserved to, <laughs> to to go to, to go to the juvenile prison for what he did? Mm, the scary part. Not so much the part where he basically feed a bunch of cops. Yes. I see. Um. Yeah. So. So. Um. I guess the the first thing which I was surprised when when I saw that um that arc. <laughs> basically, the scene where Nishi was introduced and um at the rehabilitation center and he gets. Uh, the other uh, smaller, I guess, uh, guys to beat up Joe and sh- shove a, a dirty rag in his mouth and and then jump onto onto his stomach from a from a d- double bunk bed. Um, I, I was kind of surprised that like um like it looked kind of cruel, but and I didn't expect it. Um, so there was that. Um. Yeah, I guess they do expect him to go to prison. What do you think of the prison arc? Did, was it too long? Um, yeah, just, what are your thoughts about the prison arc in general, I guess? Mm, I would say with the prison arc, it's, I enjoyed it. It's pretty much the, I wouldn't say the, ha- I would say sort of the halfway point where Joe Fay realizes what he is met. I won't say what he's meant to do, but he basically found his purpose in life instead of just being a ho- homeless wanderer. Why do you think that um, Joe was reluctant to listen to uh, Dengue? I think uh, the coach's that was the coach's name. Why was he uh, reluctant to listen to him before um, he went to uh, the the juvenile prison? Well, I spoke. I suppose the reason is doesn't really explain, but I think in Joe's case, since Joe basically goes through wanders through orphanage through orphanage, he doesn't he doesn't really trust adults that much. He thinks they're just scumbags. Yeah, if I, if I'm not mistaken, it was something like um, yeah, he doesn't trust adults. That's a good point, and um. Another thing which you kept on saying is that oh, uh, uh, this guy doesn't really care about me. He he just wants me wants to use me. 
so that he can achieve uh, his dream, or rather, the dream that he wasn't achieved by by himself through me. And I mean, he's he's not wrong about that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I, I guess it's it's not like he's not getting anything out of it either. I mean, I wouldn't. He's not wrong, but at the same time. He does learn to <laughs> care about Joe, so it's a bit, so it's true. But at the same time, he does care about Joe in the end. Yes, because uh, he he does say a few times that when it comes to botsing, um, like you have to create uh, the perfect botsing machine or something uh, unfeeling and cold and all of that. Um, but um, it's not like that. It's not like Rikishi. Or Joe, I like that, or even himself. Let's see. Um, yeah, um, I, I guess uh, what I was uh, saying earlier at the start about like a lot of sports anime f- feeling like propaganda for the sport, it's, um, uh, it's like th- th- that a lot of them get to try, or rather try to get you to um try try out the sport like it's it's the best thing ever um i didn't feel like that uh, with uh, with Ajira no Jo. um did you feel like that like that it was trying to like get you get you into into boxing or something uh, mm-hmm. like in, like if if you if you start boxing uh, all your life's problems will, will be fixed you'll find no. your perfect <laughs> yeah no but i would say i guess the tone of it is just it's more you know, it could be just me just making an assumption, but I think ultimately it's about, you know, trying your hardest and finding something you love and just work and just uh, focus on it, focusing on it. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I kind of felt like um, uh, this is, this is the, it, it, it is like the story of somebody exceptional rather than, um, Rather than like or any like the sort of sto- like the sort of story who say, which says that uh, anybody could could become joy if they try try the hard enough or something something unconvincing like that. Um, um, I guess sort of related to this uh, the, the way that boxing is presented. Um, I mean, a lot of people who I I mean I have seen like um, kind of a tendency. For people in who watch anime and stuff um, to look down on sports anime, <laughs> and I guess I guess a part of it, like like when people don't like sports anime, like um like a comeback to that is that oh so so you don't like sports anime because like uh, uh, you, you are a nerd <laughs> you are a nerd <laughs> who doesn't like sports isn't that <laughs> right snob. Um, um, that's one of the things which I which, which I've heard people say. For example, um, in that anime snobs comment comment section, when snob says that uh, he doesn't like sports anime because it's the same thing over and over again. Uh, I don't know. I I mean, most genres are like a lot of genres are like the same thing over and over again. So I, I don't know if I would single out um, sports anime. And he yeah. does like. Yeah, he does like Joe as well. So, so there, are, there probably is another reason why he doesn't like sports anime, and he hasn't realized that. Um, I, I think it's something to do with the stakes being low. Like in a lot of, in a lot of sports anime, it's not like characters die, unlike in Joe. Uh, mm-hmm. So, so I guess uh, Snob feels like okay, you didn't, you didn't win the uh, championship this time, but what the hell is they are stopping you from trying again? Uh, why should I care about 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 you winning this? Uh, anyway, um, anyway, um, so I'm I've gone off topic. Hmm. Um, yeah. So uh, uh, in the last, uh, I think it was in season two. Um, uh, I I remember. I don't know if it's, if this character is there in the manga, but it seems like the um, from what you have said that uh, the anime is pretty faithful. So it probably faithful to the manga. So it probably was there, but. I, so I remember that there was um, an arc involving a, a, a war veteran, a, a Korean um, soldier, I guess. Oh, no, I, I don't think. Yeah, he was a soldier, but he was involved in the war um, as well. 
and um, he, he was like, uh, a boxing is uh, just a game for me. Like, um, I, I, um, like he was sort of implied that the reason why he was doing this was uh, something related to the, to the military or something. Um, this is just a game. Um, you, you people take it so seriously, but uh, you you don't know. You don't know. Uh, like. Uh, uh, what uh, a real uh, heart, like uh, suffering or something real life is like um, y- y- you are just uh, monkeys for the audience um, uh, yeah so, so basically uh, basically the reasons why people usually look down on sports like have uh, like even in in the I guess the reactionary right wing politics uh, sphere which is all, which you could also say is filled with uh, nerds that they're not anime nerds but they're still another kind of nerd um so maybe you could accuse them of uh, not liking sports just because um they are not sporty people but uh, again the the what they're saying is that oh look um, uh, sports uh, uh, this kind of uh, mass sports especially is, is just a uh, it's just a distraction, um, you know. It's, it's just uh, bread and circus. You shouldn't focus on it, especially as a spectator. Uh, but like, don't be part of it because it is something bad or something. Did you did you feel like? Um, and basically, uh, Joe's retort to this uh, is that uh, no, no, that's not true because. Uh, like you can't you can't say that uh, uh, Rikishi's um, uh, suffering was meaningless, and unlike you, he actually chose to suffer, whereas you didn't. You suffered in the war, but you didn't. You didn't have any choice but to but to starve, uh, whereas um, Rikishi chose chose that or something like that. Did, did, did you, do you feel like um, uh, that adequately answers? Um, the problems which people have with mass sports, uh, like uh, boxing, I guess. Uh, I would say no, because I would say like this way. I sort of agree with the whole sports just being a mass spectator, and mostly just if you take it, if you take it too seriously, you're just it's mostly bread and circuses, but. At the same time, it's good to be physically active. It's good to participate in a physical activity. So it's hard yeah. to say which one is more right. I'd say they're both right. Yeah, for example, when uh, after Rikishi died, uh, and like people were sad for a while, but I I, rem- I remember that in um, like uh, I think Yoko and. Uh, uh, her grandfather, um, Shirashiki or something, uh, went to uh, another match um, at at the stadium or something, um, another fight, and there were like a few seconds of um, of silence. So this was like well, like a week or something or a month after Erkichi's death, and uh, like yeah, like I think uh, Yoko gave gave the referee some flowers to keep. In the middle of the ring, for a few, for around ten minutes, for a few, uh, yeah, for a minute or so, and then the, I think the referee just uh, gave the flowers back or something, or t- took them away, and like you could see pe- people in the audience like uh, uh, looking like, like I don't know, uh, uh, like they they had already for- forgotten about um, about uh, Arikichi's death. As if it was an uneven,t as if the whole thing is basically just an uneven,t um, and just like a just a distraction, um, and you, you know, like people will get will get emotional uh, at the time, and over sports, and like even get into into fights, and maybe sometimes even die. Uh, I don't know how it's uh, like in, here in uh, Europe. Uh, there are many cases of. Um, uh, after a soccer match, people just fighting each other and killing each other literally over yeah. over sports. But um, like at the end of the day, like it doesn't really matter. It's not it's not a real event, a quote unquote real event. 
Um, and I, I guess the audience in general does not come out uh, looking good, I felt like. Um, <laughs> no, it uh, seems like the author absolutely hates the audience. Like, uh, they're just like a bunch of uh, sheep uh, or something. I guess, um, I mean, so it does show that uh, cynical side, but on the other hand, it it also uh, shows that, I, and I think that this is re- less realistic, um, that uh, the, the people in uh, the town, or rather, rather the, the slum where uh, Joe lives, that that they all that they all that they all care uh, about Joe and they're all happy about him winning because I don't know I mean m- maybe I'm just being a bit too cynical but uh, w- what I think would actually happen in, re- in reality if somebody in the slums or somebody s- where people are poor suddenly uh, starts getting ahead I kind of feel like everybody else would just uh, become jealous of him. Uh, rather than <laughs> cheer, cheer, cheer him on um, as he uh, goes across uh, the uh, the Bridge of Tears or whatever it's called and leaves them behind. Um, mm-hmm. w- what did you feel? Did you feel like it, that was realistic that the people um, in the in the slums and, and the kids were like were able to be like so uh happy and care so much about joe even though like what did joe ever re- really do for them right um yeah i wouldn't well i would say it's there would be some people that are just despise him but there would also be some people that would a also also be inspired by joe and b they would cheer joe on because in a way joe's kind of just <laughs> Despite him being roguish and all that, he is very much, he, he never gives up and he's kind of like this inspiration of, oh, don't never give up. Mm, yeah. Um, like, um, I, I guess, I guess it's like, it's like a balance, um, between having, so, so, so that it doesn't just become uh, misery porn or something, um, <laughs> where like ev- everything, like um, I don't know if you have watched um, the movie Viplash, um, which is about uh, this kid getting into uh, being a a drummer, like um, for a j- for jazz. Um, and and he has this uh, very ha- harsh coach, and um, apparently it's b- based on a, a true story, quote unquote. And uh, b- basically, he trains uh, so harsh that he becomes good, but he then he ends up. Ki- uh, I think uh, like like at the end of the movie, like it says um, <laughs> that he ends up killing himself. Um. So yeah, th- that sort of thing. Um. It's it's kind of, kind of comes off cynical. I so um, like another thing which came to mind was um, like how, how the media will cover co- cover those um, uh, um, you know how a lot of uh, young athletes in China, um, like I um for the Olympics are forced. To, to do very very harsh training, and um, the media will cover this as like it's like it's a bad thing. L- look at how look at how much they are torturing uh, these little kids uh, who are like <laughs> um, like like since since the the age of seven or something, um, j- just so that uh, they can get um, they can get a medal uh, once they're older. Uh, at the Olympics and uh, make the Communist Party look good. Um, yeah. Anyway, I think we have gone kind of off topic. <laughs> let's go back to. Let's go back to Ashitano Jo. So I, I guess what I wanted to say there is that um, it doesn't. It never becomes uh, bleak like that. Um, and even at the end, like 
like I, I don't feel like it uh, the story condemns um condemns uh, Rikishi or uh, Joe for their toxic masculinity or something or for their oh, coaches yeah, yeah. like um it's not um like the the message is it's not so, so so for example in Whiplash I kind of felt like a lot of people took the message to mean like um look uh, th- this guy uh, trains so h- hard uh, at um playing the drums you know like they showed that like he's literally uh, in the last scene like he's literally bleeding i think a bit, uh, while drumming um and like uh, so so this shows that perseverance works <laughs> or something but i i didn't feel like that because um because they don't they don't show him uh, dying or something they just say like um uh, like with with uh, with white font on a black uh background they just say uh that he killed himself <laughs> so <laughs> so he, like uh, I, I don't i didn't get that feeling here like i kind of got the feeling that um yeah joe died but um like like there was nothing else um and um uh, there was nothing else for for him to do uh, or so, 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 like kind of a feeling like that and yeah. Uh, yeah um like like obviously for example like did you feel like uh, Ricky she shouldn't have stabbed himself did you feel like he was stupid for doing that mm, i would say in retrospect yes because i mean he can still achieve the goal of fighting Joe. Joe doesn't really, he doesn't really have to go to a different weight class. Joe could just bulk up. I mean, that arc basically happened in Dragon Gamer. Joe was struggling with weight. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess it was kind of foolish, but um, it's not shown like... Um, uh, like, like for example, I think he literally says to Yoko that um, uh, this, this is uh, this is this is a man's view of the world, um, and it's not denigrated for being stupid, like or something like that. Um, yeah, I guess you you could say you could say that it's um, <laughs> because I, I I kind of I I don't feel like a modern anime or let alone a modern western something anything would go that far um i mean you kind of get the same feeling with uh, with kamina in garden lagan a bit don't you like um yeah yeah like um they're not they're they're not trying to they're not i mean, obviously you get the same feeling because they basically try to do the to the uh, similar thing i guess the, or rather they knew the, 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 they were consciously uh, going for like something like Joe, I guess. Um, making references and all of that. Um, uh, let's see. Rikishi. Um, what else is there to talk about? Yeah, why don't you? Um, uh, yeah, I've 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 been doing most of the talking, so hmm. why why don't you do some talking too, George? Hmm. I suppose one thing to talk about is how. I would argue that even Rikishi's death, Joe never really got over it. He basically, what he did is for all the boxers, he kind of just made it their, his own type of Rikishi. Carlos became his own Rikishi. Jose became his own Rikishi. After when uh, Jose basically beat him or when he fought, he just said, oh, hey. It doesn't really matter if I win or lose. <laughs> At least I fought. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was k- kind of... Um, did you kind of feel like... Yeah, it was kind of like they were in their, in their own world or something. Um, and uh, Joe was going to have to uh, die this uh, noble that... Oh, oh, something like that. Something like, uh, like everybody else is just. Um, um, I mean, I would, I didn't say, I didn't feel like uh, Joe was looking down on others. Um, did you feel like, 
for example, um, you know that famous scene where like um, he's talking to Noriko, and not uh, Noriko like has moved on, um, or, or rather like this is this is uh, her last try at trying to to get um, Joe to move on and like to live a normal life and all that. Um, but then Joe explains that. Um, um, you know, like his flame is not uh, like uh, like the f- flame of a common youth, um, or something like. I, I think, I think even before that, that they, they do they do kind of uh, uh, talk about like uh, life being like a flame a bit throughout the anime. I have a few to, um, I remember that coming up a few times, but obviously that this is the most important time. Um, and and then he says that. Um, he, he uh, that his flame is not like those of others, and that uh, there will be nothing left but uh, uh, ashes, no no embers left, or something like that. Did, did you feel like uh, Joe was kind of uh, looking down on ordinary people, or something like that? Mm, or is no. I guess yeah, I guess it's more like he he was in his in his own world, or something. Um, I think what he's basically was trying to say is, you know. Boxing is the only thing I know. Without boxing, I would just essentially perish, <laughs> like a white ash. Mm, I, I, I kind of felt like he was saying that um, he is going to perish um, because he, he's going to burn up um, a much brighter, I guess. Um, his flame is going to be a, a, a brighter flame than those of um, common folk. Um, so it's going to be brighter, but there's going, there's going to be... Uh, so, so, an, uh, so I think um, an amber is another word for a flame, like, right? So there's not, there's not going to be any, any flame left. It's, it's going to burn up everything, and there's only going to be white ash left. So, it, I mean, did, did you feel like... Um, he knew because I, I guess the point. I, I felt like the point of that scene uh, was that um, he he kind of knew what was coming. Um, or did you feel like he didn't know that, or, like he he where, where he was added? Uh, like um, I, I'm. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't feel like that. I see. I would say uh, the way that I see it, he's more just. Even if I die, let's say I die in the boxing ring, I would still die. You know, this embers are like my passion for boxing and fight and fighting. Without that, I basically perish. I see. I see. Uh, because I, I kind of got the feeling uh, in the last arc where he was kind of punch drunk or something uh, that he knew that. Um, he was going to die or something like that. Uh, whereas with R- Ricky Ishii, I didn't. I didn't feel like um, he knew. He felt that. I think uh, um, m- maybe like at, at the very end, but I, I felt like he, he was feeling like um, only after, only after this, only after I have defeated Joe, can I go on to uh, become the world champion or something. Um, let's see. What has the status say? Did you feel like um, like the char- characters were a bit too selfish, self-centered, or some or anything like that? Um, mm. like they like they only cared about their own thing. Um, like um, I I I guess it goes with the like the, the kind of kind of the team that uh, like when when you are a bot so you are alone that that sort of thing i guess um i don't know what, what did you think uh i guess it's kind of the cynical in me but i found the characters in a way to be kind of realistic i don't think i mean i'm sure there's people that are you know selfish and compassionate but for the most part people do things for their own self-interest yeah, and I, I don't think 
it's always shown to be a bad thing either. But because if if anything, I kind of feel like uh, uh, when when uh, Yoko tries to be compassionate and all that, it's uh, like like look, it's just a sham. Um, and I th- I'm not sure. Like like I, like I didn't feel like. Um, well, maybe, maybe even if it was a sham, I don't think that Yoko was doing it while being aware of it. Um, it's more that um, I think the reason why Joe didn't like it is more. It's more like um, rather than the reasons that he gave, um, like about her, it was more about him. It was more uh, about that he didn't. He felt like he was. Uh, being uh, looked down upon, like um, uh, like he and the others are, are like a, like he's a charity case, and the others um, around him didn't feel like um, having any problem uh, being treated like a charity case, whereas he he couldn't stand it. Uh, I, I kind of felt like that. That was more about that. Uh, what other characters? Um, I guess um, if there's nothing else to talk about, we could talk about the characters. Or um, hmm, maybe. So we said that uh, this, this this was set in the early sixties, and I guess one of the things which comes up, um, quite I've seen come up in some reviews is that, um, or oh, this is trying to make some point about class. Um, economics or something. Did Did you feel that way? Um. Uh. To be honest, I kind of didn't. Yeah, same here. I didn't. I don't. I really didn't. It. Um. It. I mean, you. Like, I have. Like you can. You can like. Uh, um. Like force it out of the story, but the story itself is not making it. Like you. You could say that. Um, Oh look, uh, poor people like Joe have to be like uh, basically dancing monkeys for uh, rich people like um, uh, Shira Shiki, uh, Yoko's um, I don't know uh, millionaire father, uh, sorry grandfather, and uh, they have to basically like, like it's uh, it's like I don't know like the uh, Roman elite. Going to the amphitheater or the Colosseum uh, to look at gla- uh, gladiators, uh, uh, or like basically uh, the lower ca- class uh, k- killing themselves uh, in the hopes of uh, that that they might be able to exper- experience some of uh, like uh, just a little bit of that that wealth and fame. Uh, that um, the, the the elite have by entertaining them or something, and oh, I don't know. You could force it out of the story, but it's not there in the story itself. I guess the the reason why people say that is because of the un- unusual setting, um, uh, like the the place where, um, where. Um, Joe and the others live. It's it's like in nineteen sixties uh, Japan because in most anime, um, Japan is not made to look like a like a like a bad place. Or, or even if it's if it's made to look like a bad place, it's not made to look like a poor place. But yeah. back in back back in the sixties, there were there were still slums, um, and all that. So I think when people think that it's making a point about class, they're thinking about they're thinking about that. If anything else, um, let's see. Can you can you think of any other themes uh, that we might discuss? Mm. It's sort of on the nose, but I would say the biggest thing would just sort of one word. It's about honor <laughs> and keeping your word. Hmm. I mean th- that's that's pretty interesting because um, I mean in a way, uh, Joe is not shown to be like um, in some ways not not not, not always uh, to be uh, an honorable character like uh, he would put uh, stones 
rocks in his gloves. Um, you know, when when he challenged, or when he was challenged by Rekishi, he didn't he didn't have any qualms about doing that. Um, the kids and the people in the slums didn't feel wrong about uh, stealing stuff from uh, uh, the journalists coming coming there. I mean, that 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 was mostly a comedic gag, but you still get the point that they're not. Yeah. They're not honorable people. Um, Rikishi, basically, um, the moment that he meets uh, Joe, he he just uh, runs over uh, Joe's hand. Um, you know when when Joe tries to pick up the the the, the, the postcard by the the coach, which uh, um, uh, which basically Rikishi just threw on the ground rather than giving it to. Um, um to, to Joe's hand. So it's not like uh th- these are the good guys. Um, like o- o- all this acting like um, knights of chivalry or something. Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah. Uh, but but I guess I guess uh, what they're saying is that d- despite that, uh, despite that, uh, they are still honorable. They are still men. Um, and um, even if it might look idiotic. Uh, that uh, they would basically just die to keep their word. Um, it's it's and, and people will just and even if uh, the uh, the plebs will forget about it um, and move on to the next entertainment, it still it still means something to them, I guess, from their perspective. Um, uh, let's see. Honor. What else is there to say about honor? Um. So, I mean, is there anything you want to add to that theme? I guess of honor. Hmm. Well, I don't know if it's repeat, but it's sort of like uh, keeping your word. Let's say you make a promise, <laughs> you keep to your promise. You don't just falter it. Yeah. Um. So I guess another thing which. Which I th- thought about is that um, uh, uh, Yuko uh, on the server has a YouTube channel channel called um, Lord Yuko, and uh, he recently made a video. Um, uh, you you might have been to his channel anyway because I think uh, he did a podcast along like a, a hour long podcast with that, that that anime snob a while ago. So you might have come across his channel. Anyway, he made a video about um, masculinity in anime and how um, basically the characters look a lot more the male characters look a lot more feminine I mean he was um, he was kind of it was kind of a meme meme video I felt like yeah. because he, he was go- did you see the video by the way uh, I know his channel but I've not seen the video yet yeah, it was kind of a meme video because, like, he was going for like, like, on, like on one side, he like, in the thumbnail it was uh, Kenshiro from Fist of the North Star, and from the other, it, it's uh, Asphalt so, or something that a uh, fanboy character, uh, the trap yeah. character. Um, and I mean, uh, I mean, it's he might make, make have a point uh, overall, but it's it's not like uh, every character back then. Looked like Kenshiro, and every character, every male character back then looked like Kenshiro, and every ca- main character right now looks like Asphalt. So, uh, but but I guess I guess um, he does have a point in the. So, so I guess, for example, if you look at um, if you look at um, Joe, uh, it's not like. Um, has a very so um so i guess the, the point sort of is that um it's not it's not like I, like obviously like, like the, the the most important thing is not the fact that um the character designs have changed uh to look more generic uh you know self-insert protagonist number uh, nine thousand and one or something, but uh, though even though that that's a problem too, of course. But um, but at the same time, I mean, you could also say that um, 
you know, c- characters like Joe were ca- kind of like a type too. Like, um, they were kind of like a a type of character too. Um, so, you, like, like there there were a lot of other characters like who looked like Joe, for example. Like, um, I, I posted a, few, a couple of examples on the server. I don't know if you saw them. Um, like uh, the protagonist of uh, Daltanius uh, mech show for kids. Um, and and a bu- and a bunch of other characters I, that you can think of. Um, but but I guess what what has changed is that in a lot of in a lot of that old anime, even though the characters did not always look like uh, bodybuilders essentially, um, there was still like a lot of talk about uh, being a man, masculinity, um, and. Um, like I, uh, like a uh, like basically both Joe and Rikishi tell um tell Yoko like uh, you you are a woman so you wouldn't get this though hmm. I guess though, though I guess at the end she does get it with um, with Joe just took a a lot by longer um you know you know when uh, when she she cheers on Joe at the end um yeah anything to add to that. Ramble of mine. Well, I guess another thing I would <clears throat> add to that is not just the look, but I would say sort of the attitude where it shows very much a rogue that just doesn't really, doesn't care about, opposes any type of authority or just anytime he conf- someone confronts him, he just fights back. Yes, yeah. I, I, think, I think that's because... Um... Like a lot, a lot of these old uh, protagonists, um, like e- even the prote- uh, even Amuro from, um, um, well, Amuro less so, but um, certainly Joe. Like, um, um, they are not. For some reason, uh, a lot of anime protagonists uh, th- these days have to like be calm and rational. Com- for some reason, um, whereas like in a lot, of, in a lot of these old anime, like um, I think there was a preference for, like, um, you know, I I wouldn't I wouldn't say say that um, they weren't like that they were dumb characters or something. Okay, who could who could only do things with their fists, for example. Um, like, uh, like Amuro from Gundam. Hmm. O- o- obviously, I mean, he's so he's kind of dumb, but he's he's also smart. Um, well, like, well, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if, if he's re- written smart, but um, well, apparently he's able to figure out how to use a, how to use a mobile suit by by just looking at a manual or something. So, um. Um, I don't know. I guess the point which I'm kind of trying to make is that um, what you get now are more like uh, int, I uh, intelligence based, quote unquote intelligence ba- based heroes who are uh, protagonists who who basically win because they know something which the other characters don't know. Um, yeah, maybe maybe I'm just generalizing. Yeah. I would say uh, the other side would be characters who are just very weak or very socially awkward, and the only reason they win is because, oh, this social, this socially awkward character lives in a world that caters to them for some reason without any merit or worth. Yes, yes. For for example, the knowledge which they have about a video game might coincidentally prove useful to them. When they're stuck in a when when they're reborn in another world, which looks exactly like the video game for some reason, um, so 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 they don't they don't have to be so impulsive like Joe, um, yeah. Because I think I think yeah. This is, I mean, I guess Joe d- does kind of mellow out by the end. But that's that's basically because 
he's reaching the end. I uh, I kind of felt like um, his core character was was very impulsive. Um, yeah. Let's see. I, let's see. Let's move on to the characters, maybe. So, uh, did you? I guess uh, other than. Did you feel like um, the side characters were not developed enough? It was all about Joe and maybe Rikishi. What what did you feel about the side characters, I guess? Any memorable ones? Uh, I would say one memorable one would be obviously Dompe. Hmm. Uh, Do you think his character develops in any way? Mm, I don't know if I would say develop. He is a bit of a static character, but I would say the only thing that ch- changes is sort of his relationship between him and Joe. It starts out as sort of a one-sided, oh, I want you to become a boxer, so for my selfish reasons, to just, oh, <laughs> I want to also do that, but... You're also my son, in a way. Yeah, yeah, I, I did ki- kind of get the feeling that... Uh, did, 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 you, did you, by the way, get the feeling that, so, so that basically, basically Joe really only had... Only really had um, Dante. I think he, 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 he... I believe he had uh, Nishi for a while, but then Nishi gets an injury. And by that point, uh, basically... Um, I don't think. Um, I, I don't. I didn't feel like uh, Joe had any friends other other than. I mean, I guess there, there were those little kids or something, or Noriko. But um, I felt like the the only character who was kind of on the same level and on the same side, um, uh, was not his same age because obviously, uh, then Dante is a lot older. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I get. I I guess. Yeah, I guess. Um, Joe's character that does start out as um as a loner, and then sort of drift back into it as well. Um. Uh. Let's see. So Dante, what else is got to say about Dante? Um. Hmm. I guess it's. We don't. Would you like to see? Like, I guess one of the things which I which I did think of um, after after finishing season two is like um, how could if if uh, if there were to be like a an expansion of like or a sequel or prequel or something? The only thing which came to mind were like maybe have one of the kids pick up botsing for some reason, which I don't know. It's just kind of a stretch. I guess the reason why this came to mind is because that's kind of what happens in the in the UC Gundam thing, right? Um, new new characters come up, and the older characters are the as kind of mentor characters. Um, so I guess one thing that they could do would have been to show um, Dan Pace backstory, but I don't know. I, I I mean, he's he certainly seems to know a lot, but um, about botsing. But um, they they never really say. I I think they say that he didn't really get that far in botsing, right? So I don't know if that would be that interesting to watch. What do you think? Well, I would say the interesting part is seeing how he got his injury, and seeing him as a former boxing coach. They did kind of give clues as to his backstory. Hmm. Did you feel like um, Yoko's character, or, or rather that the, the the fact that she kind of fell in love with Joe, that that that, that kind of came out of nowhere or something like that? Mm, to be honest, not at all. It's considering uh, Yoko is like the perfect example of how a woman behaves. To be quite honest with you. Because uh, 
It was the only one that kind of didn't really put up with her bullshit. So she's kind of like, oh, this man <laughs> who didn't put up with his bullshit. He's interesting. Hmm. Did you feel like she she was interested in Rikishi? Yeah, she was interested in Rikishi, but she's kind of considered Joe as sort of a plan B. I see. Um, because, um, I mean, did you kind of get the feeling at any point uh, that uh, she, she was just using Rikishi to get to Joe? Um, yeah. Or not? <laughs> I see. You also got that feeling, right? Hmm. Um. Uh, I guess. Uh, hmm. What What else is that? Uh, is that is that, is that to say about Yoko the, other than she's guess, a realistic woman? <laughs> yeah. I sorry. Guess go on. There's one scene where, not shown in the anime but in the manga, Yoko brings flowers, and there's this one scene where Yoko and Rikishi talk, and Rikishi's just like, "Oh, why are you bringing flowers?" <laughs> Yoko is just oh I I don't remember the scene specifically but uh, I remember Rikishi just cheesing Yoko after he, she gave flowers to Joe. Oh, hello. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, I, I do kind of get the, got the feeling. I I got the feeling with Gundam as well. So maybe it's something with all some old anime that uh, the characters su- suddenly get get pissed off. Uh, um and, and punch each other or slap each other suddenly out of nowhere kind of sort of um especially with yoko's character where like um i don't know like um uh, you know yoko's and um joe's inter- interactions were always fun to watch and um i mean a lot of the time it was it was joe uh starting uh being on the combative but uh yeah, but, but but sometimes like the conversation w- would go like from a zero to like uh, <laughs> to a hundred pretty pretty fast. Um, you know, the, they would all yeah. I don't know. Um, did they explain? I don't think they ever explain why it is that uh, Noriko looks like Yoko, right? Mm, I would say it's just the manga artist, uh, manga artist's style. Yeah, but because it's um, I think. It's not. It's not just us, the audience, who noticed that, but it's also um, Joe who notices because the first time she, uh, he sees the uh, Noriko is uh, he's like, "Oh, is that uh, Yoko?" Um, I think I think uh, he, he confuses her, but it's not. I don't think that that ever is brought up again. Uh, what I guess, given that you said that Yoko's character is a realistic female. Would that mean that Noriko's character is an unrealistic female, I guess? Given that they're, mm. ki- they're kind of opposites. They're opposites, but in a way they have some s- similarities. I mean, one similarity is both talk to Joe about, oh, you're just going to die in the ring. Yoko did it in more, uh, what is the word? Sort of a more snide kind of way, and Noriko's just like, "Oh, you should stop boxing. You're gonna kill yourself." Uh, yeah. Why do you think uh, that Yoko is interested in uh, boxing in the first place? No, I don't. No, I don't think she's interested in boxing. She quote unquote is. Interested in boxing because of Joe. I see. Um, yeah, I, I don't think we ever get an explanation about why Rikishi and Yoko were close um, before um, b- before basically they met they met um, they met Joe. Um, we, we never really got to get to know about how they meet each other or anything like that. We just know that. Uh, um, she helps out Rikishi, yeah. and uh, yeah. I suppose I... one thing you can infer from that is, I know that the grandfather was is passionate about boxing, so he probably notices a story about Rikishi going to prison. He goes, "Oh, why is this uh 
once great boxer in prison. I see, I see. That could have been it. Um, so, uh, there are two compilation movies for Ajitano Joe. And uh, I don't know if you've watched them both, but I'm sure that you watched the first one. Uh, I tried to watch the first one, but I couldn't finish it. I, I see, I see. Um, I mean, what's wrong with it? Uh, it just felt Russian. And I noticed they took scenes out, which just took a lot of context. Say a good example is after when Joe and Don Pei meet, they immediately cut to the scene of Joe getting <laughs> Joe basically bidding up cops. I see. I see. Uh, yeah, I guess they had. I, I think that's also a live action movie, but um, from what I've heard of um, about it, it's, the problem with it is that they turn in. It's, it, I think it came out of, like, like a. a uh, in 2004, something like that. So they turned uh, Joe into a modern anime protagonist, essentially, even though it's a live action. So basically, they made him a lot more timid. Yeah, which I didn't like at all. So you have seen you have seen the live action, then? I didn't watch it fully, but I, I have seen it. It's not bad, but I don't know. I didn't like it. I see. So let's see. So I'm I'm looking at um, the uh, my animalist page, and obviously, um, the the character with the most likes is Joe. Next, it's Rikishi. Next is uh, Danpei. And uh, oh god, uh, Carlos has got uh, more more likes, uh, more users uh, than, than Yoko. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 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 t- so tell us a bit about Carlos, I guess. Why, why do you think that people like... So uh, Yoko has 50 users um, and um, nine, um, uh, Carlos has 99. So basically almost twice the likes. <laughs> um, so tell us a bit about Carlos. What's so good about him? Why do you think that people like him? Mm, I guess people like the whole, well, the way that I see Carlos, he's sort of a Venezuelan version of Joe, so they're both kind of kindred spirits. And in a way, Carlos is kind of like the jux of Joe getting back on his feet and just, I would sort of moving on, but not really. Yeah. Uh, I believe didn't Carlos die as well, or maybe I'm. I don't... No, he didn't die, but it was still, it's still a very, still a sad ending. He became box drunk and homeless. Oof. Yeah. Mm, I mean, that, that is that is what I said. Like uh, they 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 don't try to make uh, to to make boxing look good. Um, like a lot of. Like a lot of sports anime try to look, try to make the sports, the sport which they are, they they basically be, become, un like I don't think that they're paid by anyone to do it, but they become basically, uh, promotions for the sport and un, unpaid promotions for the for the sport. Um, but it's it's not just sports anime. Like for example, Keon, um, is is kind of trying to get you to. Uh, form a band, right? Like, um, yeah, without showing you like any any of the uh, harsh things which come with that, with forming a band. Uh, like, they just get into concerts and everything just turns out well for them. Um, like, obviously, most most uh, sports anime is not that bad, but you you get the point. Um, yeah. So, it, like, basically. The most important thing with that kind of anime is to try to get you to do something, essentially. Um, and for, for example, um, yeah, I think Snob made the point in, I believe it was in, in the Harui Suzumiya review, I think, um, where he said that basically 
things like Kaon and Aroi Zizumiya probably got more people to uh, start up their own band and or do something rather than the more realistic um, kind of uh, anime, which which in that case I think he compared um, uh, he compared um, Kaon to Beck. Apparently, there's an anime about called Beck about forming oh, yeah. a, a band, which is which is a bit more realistic. Uh, yeah, I've heard that uh, anime is good. I'll get around to that. Let's see. Uh, no request. Only got two two likes. Uh, okay, that's um, appropriate. I see. Um, I see. Um, I guess. Mm, before before we go and have a look at some of the negative reviews just for fun on Mal, um, uh, do you have anything else to add? Mm, I suppose the closing thought. I suppose the only thing to add is, well, it doesn't matter if you watch, if you read the manga, or watch both series. <laughs> Either way, go watch that or slash read a she didn't know Joe. Mm, I see. Was there anything that um, you had in mind well, with telling, uh, which you didn't get the chance to tell, but you had in mind to tell when when you started when we started this chat? Mm. <laughs> to be honest, I can't really think of anything other than <laughs> it's kind of funny that uh, sort of aside that. I find it funny that Rikishi kind of looks like uh, Rocky and uh, Jose Mendoza kind of looks like Sean Connery. Um, come to think of it, I, I haven't watched uh, the Rocky movies and all that. Um, but from from the impression that I get, uh, um, so basically Rocky and those movies are like uh, the fairy tale version of um, Ashura no Joe. Is that is that right? Or maybe they are better than what I give them credit for. Mm, yeah, sort of. They sort of Ashura no Joe minus the whole <laughs> minus the whole death or any of the <laughs> minus the whole death or stories of war. Mm, so it's minus the ne- the negative consequences, I guess. Yeah, mm, I mean it's Hollywood. I'm not surprised. Uh, um, I don't know what, uh, like I don't know, like what people have against uh, having uh, uh, not, not exactly. I don't know. One of the reasons why I don't like watching movies um, is that for some reason a lot of movies um, like that. Uh, it, it kind of feels like they're pressured to have a happy ending somehow. Um, yeah, it's, it's either, uh, yeah, it's usually that, or, yeah, I don't know why, why it is, um, why it is that I think that, uh, audiences would be annoyed by that, um, because I, I don't think that anybody was annoyed by Joe's ending, for example, people loved it. Or if you want a movie example, Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah, which I haven't watched either, so maybe I should watch that. <laughs> I will link it on the recording channel. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, n- now that you have told me that it has a, it, it has a tragic ending, <laughs> uh, I mean, it's it's like when people complain about um, anime sites uh, having a tragedy um, tag uh, because you know it kind of spoils it, it kind of spoils the ending sometimes when when there's a tragedy tag. Um. All right. Um. Are still there? I'm still here. So I'm going to change the tab on my computer. Uh, uh, sorry, on my phone, so I can't. Like, I, I can only have one thing open at the, at the time, so I won't be able to keep an eye on the on the recording channel. Um. Uh. Don't so ju- I'll just keep an eye and make sure that um, Craig uh, stays there, right? Because okay. if Craig if Craig is no longer there, then um, it means it's not recording. Uh, we have been very lucky today. Uh, Craig has been there. Um, 
Yeah, uh, but by the way, I, I, I must say that uh, even though nobody watches the live streams, um, somehow I, this feels, uh, you know, just recording it um, without it being live. Even though I'm not going to do any, any editing anyway, um, it feels more relaxing somehow. <laughs> um, I, guess, than... uh, I guess it's sort of the feel of a live stream being in front of a live audience where you sort of have a different expectation, whereas the recording is just more of a closed space. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, uh, it kind, kind of feels more like uh, it's just you and me. Uh, whereas uh, with the live stream, even if there's nobody watching, it feels different somehow. Anyway, let's have a look. Uh, have you have, have you been on any of the live streams, by the way? I believe I was for the Gurren Logan. Yeah, yeah, you go on that, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, because I, I kind of feel like... And I, also, another good thing about the chat that we had today, I feel like, is, um, is that it's just the two of us. When, it, when it's more people, when there's more people on, uh, I mean, nothing wrong with... It's not because it's not their fault, but um, uh, I I kind of feel like uh, there's more pressure to stay on topic um, when there's more people on. Whereas here, you can kind of uh, when, when there's only a few people on, or, or, or only two people on, I kind of feel easier to talk about something else and then uh, return to to the topic because when there's more people on, you don't want to waste their time. Um, because they might have something relevant to say. Until yeah, exactly. so, yeah. Where I say like um, I have more time to ramble on, and so that hopefully something relevant might actually come to mind. <laughs> um, so I, I'm going to read some of the negative reviews um, of Pashitano Joe because I don't know. I kind of feel like positive reviews are just going to say the same things which we said. Yeah, um, the choir. So, I mean, it's always good to have negative people. So even though we are going to, we are probably going to say that they're wrong. Um, yeah, don't feel discouraged if you don't like something which most people like, like Ashley and Ojo. Um, okay, so Lindel on Mal has given it a rating of um, six. Uh, I mean, not, not exactly a, a low rating, but this is for, yeah, yeah. this is this is Mal. So, and uh, um, they they tend to give stuff uh, a high rating by default, higher than five. So, so so while there are some uh, early, an- so I'm reading him. While there are some early anime that are well regarded, Ashita no Joe is often considered to be the anime medium's first true work of greatness. Uh, in many ways, it does hold up as the benchmark that is regarded as being as being, but in many other ways, um, it requires a good for its time disclaimer. As do many of its contemporaries. Do, do you did you get the feeling that it that it's I didn't get the feeling that it's good for no. its time. As, I would say aside from the animation, but other than that, not really. Same here, same here. I mean, it's and it's not like there there, there is stuff uh, which is only good for for its time, uh, and you shouldn't maybe you shouldn't be too. Ha- I mean, you can be too harsh. Uh, you can always be harsh, but uh, you should all keep in mind. Uh, about the historical value that it has, uh, something like uh, uh, the original, uh, the original space battleship Yamato, or the original Gundam. Um, you do kind of, I did kind of feel like, um, yeah, this, this is this must have been good for it. M- must have felt a lot better when it came out, but that's not an excuse for for it either. So from yeah. a production standpoint, Ashira no Joe has actually held up exceptionally well compared to many other, other 70s anime. So it came, the anime came out in the 70s. Um, while it does have animation errors all over the place, the rough, sketchy way in which it is drawn makes it look highly stylized for its time. And due to the rough nature of its art style, the animation errors are far less glaring, glaring than they would have been in something clean, cleaner looking. This style also translates to some very well-animated fight scenes with surprisingly minimal use of stock animation. Uh, My only complaint regarding the production is some of the voice acting, which often sounds monotonous and amateurish. Uh, Did you you feel that? The voice acting was off or anything like that? I can't really say it was off or anything. 
yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know Japanese, um, so it just felt like anime characters to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I don't think that there's... It's, I'm pretty sure that there's an Italian dub, but I'm not sure if there's an English dub, is there? No, I don't think so. I guess for uh, the second series, perhaps, but for the first series, probably not. I see. Uh, there are a few standouts, though, such as... Uh, Shusei Nakamura's take on Rikishi Toru, as well as Robert and Carlos being rare examples of foreign characters in anime, having an audible accent, although why Venezuelans are speaking English is never explained. <laughs> oh, uh, the, the English, yeah. Was it bad? To be honest, it kind of was pretty charming. It kind of made me laugh. I see. I've forgotten about it, but yeah. And because, yeah, b- basically, um, um, yeah, that, that's what happens. I mean, w- would you have rather they, they just spoke Japanese? No, I think it would. It's it's funnier that way that they speak English. Hmm. So the dialogue has aged much more badly, though, as around ninety percent of sentences spoken spoken in the anime. Contain, contain the word Joe, most likely uttered thousands of times over the course of the series, which gets about as grating as you, you, you would expect. Um, did you feel that people were just saying Joe all the time? I sort of got his point, but at the same time, it didn't really bother me. I mean, in anime, they do kind of repeat a lot of words or say a lot of their names. The worst example would be Naruto. Yeah, I think yeah, but because Naruto is again one one of the another one of those series which has a protagonist um, around which the whole story is centered. Um, like whereas something like something like say Legend of the Galactic Heroes is not just about one character, I guess. Um, so maybe Maybe that's an excuse. Um, so this is this is a symptom of one of um, Ashita no Joe's most obvious flaws. Everybody is obsessed with Joe to an to an to an unrealistic extent. This would be understandable if he were particularly charismatic or likable. But Joe is an antisocial drifter whose earliest actions in the series mostly consist of theft. And beating up people. As part of, as part of his character arc, Joe starts off as much more of an anti-hero as possible. So the fact that he is regarded as though he was some kind of uh, kind some kind of mess, messiah um, is by, by most people who know him makes very little sense. I guess I guess this, this is also the complaint um, which I made, right? That yeah, uh, yeah. but but, but you yeah go on. That point is good, but I would say the whole point of him, oh, Joe just, uh, I mean, Joe just beats people and disrespects, but at the same time, it's kind of understandable why the kids would like him. I mean, he did basically save one kid from a Yakuza gang and just beat them up. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and he basically turned, turned them into his own little gang. Um, yeah. So my single biggest biggest complaint with the series is Joe's loyal followers, a band of delinquent children who clamor over Joe for reasons that are never adequ- adequately explained. They provide most of the show's comic relief, which is never actually funny. They serve no purpose in the plot other than to distract us from it. Their parents also seem disturb- to be disturbing- disturbingly okay with their sometimes near-suicidal devotion to a homeless, dangerous uh, ex convict drifter who who has involved them in criminal activity. Um, uh, I, that okay. part I really don't understand. I mean, it's considering Joe's a lot older than them, they just see him as a role model. I don't understand what's so hard to understand. Yeah, and as for the parents, I think um, maybe it's hard for people to un- people to understand these days. But uh, in in the past. Um, parents used to be a lot less hands 
hands uh, or rather a lot more hands off when it comes to children children used to just uh, go outside and get hurt uh, and as, given that these are literally kids in in a slum um well i kind i kind of feel like the parents probably don't care that much about, about their kids yeah uh, um and uh, okay um yeah again and to i mean i guess even if you do find the kids annoying um don't they i mean they are always there but there's uh, i feel like as things become become more serious serious and things go on um their presence becomes less important mm-hmm. and and i yeah and i guess and i guess it's it, i kind of get the complaint again that like uh, why do these kids care so much um after a certain point because yeah it's true that uh, uh, joe saved the uh, sachi the, 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 the little girl and um uh helped formed um formed a, a, a gang sort of i don't know what the hell they were doing um with them for a while but i i, I kind of feel like after he comes back from the juvenile prison he doesn't really care about them he just he, i don't know i guess they do show show him playing with them a bit yeah. um but the, as i said i mean once you understand that they 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 are just there for like um kids who watch this to feel uh, included uh you can just ignore them really yeah, uh, w- w- what about the point that uh, the comedy is unfunny uh considering i watched anime with uh, more worse comedy it didn't really bother me yeah okay uh this show's big- biggest strength on the other hand lies with the rest of its characters yeah i mean the, the rest of the characters are more important <laughs> um more than watching this show is about becoming a better person many characters uh, develop uh, many characters d- development uh revolves around this Joe starts off as a juvenile delinquent and progresses to someone trying to make a name for himself Nishi also begins as a ju- juvenile delinquent but moves towards becoming a well-adjusted member of society uh yeah can't you think of it um we didn't really speak that much about Nishi uh but i mean he just uh, disappears basically from yeah halfway through the story yeah i mean hmm. yeah from from that point on as, as i said earlier it's just uh, it's just that Dan- danpei and um and uh, joe by the way it's yeah. never it's 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 never explained why um joe has a basically a uh, an english name um, it's not a, I, i don't think it's a, like a shortening of a japanese name or something i think yeah i think no. it, yeah Um okay that Dan- Nanpei quits drinking and dedicates himself to restoring his career as a box- boxing coach. Um b- by the way uh, once you finished watch- watching the anime did you feel like he wanted to know what happened to the characters after the last panel or do you think or would it, would that would that have made things worse? Mm, to be honest I think they're fine just the way they are. I mean if you really want to speculate what happened go right ahead but I don't know I think the fact that they their story begins and ends is fine by me ultimately it's a show about Joe those characters are there just to <laughs> mostly to support Joe so the highlight of uh, the cast are Joe's two main rivals Rikishi Toru and Carlos Rivera I don't know. I, I didn't feel like Carlos was as important as Rikishi. Um as you said it, it just felt like uh, Carlos was just um a replacement uh a stand in for R- Rikishi, right? Yeah. I mean it was more blatant than the second anime where he's just where he, Joe tells you go find me another man like Rikishi. <laughs> okay. So, uh, anime has a strong history of great rivalries. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, and uh, yeah, and I, I guess, uh, and Rikishi is perhaps the first great rival rival uh, in the mid in the whole medium. So, I mean, I recently watched uh, another rivalry coming to an end uh, in Cha's counter attack. Um, you know, the rivalry between Amuro Ray and Cha Aznable. And mm. to, to to be honest, I felt like this was a lot more better than that. <laughs> um. Can can you think of any other great rivalries in anime? Mm. Not as good as Rikishi and Joe's, to be quite honest. Mm. I guess I guess the only thing which comes to mind. I mean, I, I don't know if it's not a great anime or something, but uh, people certainly remember remember the, the rivalry um, between. Light Yagami and L, I guess. I can't yeah. think of it. Yeah. I suppose mm. another example would probably be the rivalry between Goku and Vegeta. Yes, yes, good point. Um, yeah, I, I guess. I, I guess looking at how that ended up, uh, I think it's a good thing that they killed Rikishi. It would have. <laughs> yeah, I mean, would. It would have kind of been lame if, um, like, I don't know, Rikishi and Joe became friends or something like that, right? I mean, it's sort of implied that they liked each other, and Joe kind of realizes, oh, yeah, this person is sort of my friend, after the fact. Um, yeah, I guess I guess the question is why didn't they need to beat beat each other up? But, but I guess uh, I guess they needed to because um, to prove each other that they are both because that that's the reason why they are both respecting. Yeah, um, and part of the reason why Rikishi was out of his stump in the first place is because of his fight with Joe. Yeah, and um, Rikishi. Let's see. Mm. Okay, so that that was uh, Rikishi. Uh, he, so Rikishi represents the opposite of Joe, where Joe is rash, easily angered, and impulsive. Uh, Rikishi is calm, suave. I don't know how, how you say that word. Uh, and collected. Um, the, 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 the direction he takes when he finally finds a bot subvertive of his rivalry in Joe makes for the most compelling arc in the show. Carlos, on the other hand, is supposed to be a clear parallel to Joe, coming from a similar background and rising from his upbringing in the slums. Did you did you feel like they did a good job of showing that that uh, Carlos is supposed to be a, a parallel to Joe, coming from a similar background and rising from his upbringing in the slums? Yeah, I would I would say they well, it's sort of show. Yeah, I would say the fact that. His backstory is similar, and the fact that when they meet each other, they realize both of them are great uh, boxers, and they want to fight each other. Mm. I, I guess, I guess uh, the relationship between them uh, is not as complex as the one be- between um, between Joe and Rikishi, because no. be- because I don't think that they start e- they start out by by disliking each other so much, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I guess I guess you could say the same thing about the relationship between Yoko and uh, Joe as well. Um, and of course, as you have noticed, it's always some other character and Joe, not some other some two other or other two characters where like one of them is not Joe. Yeah, it's always Joe and another person. Uh... For all its up, its, its up and its ups and downs, Joe's story is an engrossing one, uh, and the great characterization makes it easy to become invested in Joe's de- developing career. The beginning is quite poor, but once the prison start uh, uh, arc starts and Joe begins taking Watson seriously, it's easy to get uh, to get hooked. Um, it's kind of a <laughs> very positive review for a six. Yeah, Let's that's see. what. I, yeah. I mean, do you agree with him that um, the beginning before the the prison arc is not that good? It's poor? I wouldn't call it poor, but the prison arc is certainly a lot better. The beginning is ca- 
has its purpose of, oh, this is what is why Joe went to prison in the first place, but the prison arc is a lot better. Yeah, I, the feeling that I get get is that uh, this guy just hated the kids so much, and the first <laughs> arc, and, and the first arc had the kids in them a lot, right? Um, because they that they were with Joe. Um, yeah, so maybe that's why. But it's not that long, right? It's pretty short. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, so the beginning is quite viral. I read that. Uh, the Rikishi arc in particular is a masterpiece in, in its own right, and it's unfortunately impossible to discuss in detail without tremendous spoilers. Yeah. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I haven't watched any reviews. Uh, have you watched any Ashitanojo reviews? Uh, I don't think there's a lot, but... Mm, no, I haven't seen any. I guess the question I was going to ask is uh, whether... These reviewers, um, especially on YouTube, whether they, they spoiled the fact that Rikishi dies or how they get around that. <laughs> uh, but I guess uh, neither of us uh, watch them, so I guess we'll, we'll, I'll find out. We'll find out after hmm. this chat. So, um, final words: It takes up some, uh, it takes a bit of patience to get into, but overall, I would recommend Joe as one of the better better series. I've seen from the 1970s, so he gives the story and the plot an 8 out of 10. Uh, would you give the, the story and the plot an 8 out of 10? Yeah, similar rating. Probably. The character... I see. Probably what? I'd say, well, I don't know if it's the aspect of the show, but I give the both the series a 9, so that is one of the reasons. Uh, the characters, only a 7 out of 10 too low i think yeah way too low animation and art six out of ten maybe fair would you say yeah but yeah i kind of forgive the animation well i guess uh if you if you exclude the animation what what about the art style the art style i don't mind particularly i mean it's very cartoony but it's also very expressive so would you like to see Joe getting adapted again with modern animation? Um, it wouldn't be a bad thing, but I don't want it to be exactly the same story at the same time. Mm, I see. I mean, on the one hand, uh, I guess uh, it's is it something like I'm not sure, but it's something like exactly like the Hunter Hunter series. Well, like uh, not particularly no, no. no. In, in the sense that um, you get people who don't want to check out the all the series, so who say that the could it could be like that if it happened, but we could we can only speculate. So music is a seven out of ten. What do you think of the music? Yeah, the soundtrack. Mm, I would say it had some memorable tracks, although it. Occasionally, it it wasn't had as much variety, but it was still a good soundtrack. Yeah, I I think um, I think that 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 that, that, uh, that there were a few very good tracks, um, like the one which plays um, in the scene where Joy is talking about, um, you know. Um, uh, there be no no embers left and only ash, and yeah. uh, a few others like that. Um, I guess some of the 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 ones used in the action scenes were good too. Mm. Um, the opening and ending, I don't even remember them. Were, were they that good or not? I Did enjoyed. Even... I enjoyed I most of it, and I would say my favorite opening would probably be the first one, and my favorite ending would be. Rule, the ending that plays Rikishi's theme. I see. So, uh, at, for the acting, he gives a 2 out of 10. So I imagine by acting, he means the voice acting. Yeah. I don't, I mean, it's, it's I, I don't know, I, I didn't feel like it was horrible or anything like that, to be honest. Um, but... No, it wasn't really that. I don't know, it wasn't really the worst. 
So it, uh, he recommends uh, Slam Dunk and Rainbow. I don't know what Rainbow is. I don't know what Rainbow is either. But Slam Dunk is good. I see. I don't know. I, I remember... See- I mean, but wasn't it about, about a bunch of high schoolers who look like giants or something? For some reason? Uh, well, or maybe yeah. I mean, it's because they're basketball. It's about an anime about basketball. I see. Um, let's see. So it, the anime came out in 1970. Um, it it was the Mushi Studio, pro, Mushi, Mushi Production. Never heard of it. Uh, no, never heard of it either. Let me have a quick look at the manga. Okay, adaptation. Yeah, I don't know why uh, Mal has a different um, on mobile. This, I don't know, it just sucks. Um, let me go to the dos- desktop side view or something. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but then again, everything sucks on mobile. So the Mal... Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so this the manga came out in 19, from 1968 to 1973. Hmm. Uh, th- and uh, I don't think it's one author, right? Yeah, I think. So there's oh. two. Yeah, sorry. There's an author and there is an illustrator. Have you seen any, any other, other stuff uh, by these guys? Uh, no. Not particularly, but I've heard the name Tiger Mask. Oh, Tiger Mask. T- Tiger Mask is like um, it's it's about wrestling, but it's like uh, like there's a secret organization. Or it's um, like a, like sort of like a monster of the week kind of thing. But uh-huh. if, so so the wrestler is like a hero, superhero, and a wrestler at the same time somehow. Uh, so it's for kids. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh, I'm just looking to see any negative reviews for the manga, but I doubt it because uh, it's it's harder to watch, to read. I guess I mean it's it's faster, but um, um, from from what I've noticed, uh, people tend to give manga a higher score in general for some reason. <laughs> maybe it's, maybe it's because they're genuinely better. I don't know, and. Um, but I, I I kind of get the feeling that when it comes to manga, um, you get less people hate reading it than when it comes to anime. You get more people yeah. hate watching it. Well, it's probably because of the length. I mean, if you really hate something and reading it, you would probably just stop halfway with anime. I don't know. I guess because it's a bit, usually it's more fast paced and more fluid. You just watch it and just. Absorb. There's a three out of ten review. Oof. Hmm. Let's have, a look. Let's have a look at that, um, and then maybe we'll call it a day. Uh, it doesn't look to be that long. So, I really wish I could recommend Ashira no Joe, the anime, because the manga story deserves to get a good adaptation. Oh, and so I, he loves the manga. I see. So. Uh, unfortunately, both has an adaptation and on, on, its, on its own show. Um, Ashira no Joe is just bad. Uh, I initially, they, they call it ANJ. Uh, initially, um, wanted to approach this from a perspective of, of someone who hasn't read the manga and judged the anime on its own strength. But I couldn't make it through beyond about 30 something episodes before dropping it and having a blast reading through the manga. There's two big reasons behind why I strongly, dis- I strongly dislike this anime. For one, ANJ has terrible pers- pacing. In 79 episodes, it adapts merely about 11 and a half volumes of the manga. That's roughly seven episodes per volume. And uh, anyone watching uh, the anime, yeah, uh, I personally had like the opposite reaction. I kind of felt like the manga was a bit too fast. Um, and prefer the pacing in, in the anime. So I didn't mind the pacing in the anime. I thought it was perfect. But did you feel like the anime was slower than the manga? 
It was, but I, I personally <laughs> enjoy the pacing both the in the anime and manga, so I can't really say. I see. Um. Okay, so the terrible pacing. Anyone watching anime will, will likely notice the many ways in which Dezaki. Um, oh, so it's directed by those um, Dezaki, I guess. Um, Padded things out. Awkward pauses in dialogue, long scenes consisting of a few still shots. Reused animations shown over and over. Animation loops that are held for way longer than they should be. Um, did you notice a lot of uh, reused animation? Uh, there might have been, but I guess I was too engrossed to the story to notice Care that. About it. So the stuff that is all uh, this that stuff is all relatively innocent compared to the second big problem, the way it constantly pads out content with anime original material. W was there? Okay, I don't know. Uh, uh, there was there was a few. I mean, I guess one episode was the whole. <laughs> this one man wants to be in the boxing coach, wants to be in uh, Don Pei's boxing gym, but Don Pei's just like no. You can't, we don't have any more, so Cho decides to scam him, and it literally ends in one episode. Uh, yeah, that that was pretty not good, but, uh, I mean, it was, I don't know. Um, it wasn't, I mean, there, there weren't that many of those episodes. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so it pads out content with uh, with anime original material, and at the same time, they managed to cut out some scenes and dialogue from the original. The, mm, but you didn't notice that, did you? Uh, uh, I noticed they cut out a one scene I mentioned with uh, Yoko. And they, I suppose they, well, yeah, they did cut out the scene where the reason why Joe did the whole pig chasing was Nishi kind of said, hey, Joe, use this to escape prison. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. I see. But it wasn't really that much. Yeah. More often than not, uh, then the stuff that they cut out is not some unimportant rubble, but are rather scenes that, that add nuance to the to the work as a whole. It removes teeth from us. So give us some examples, okay? I know anime was being produced roughly at the midpoint of of the manga's publication, but they also only adapt about half of it. So I don't believe there's an excuse, any excuse to alter so much. Mm, half of it? Mm. Yeah, he is right about that. They only adapted half of it, and it pretty much ends with uh, Joe and Carlos fighting. They made their own ending of Joe just being a drifter again. I see, so so, so that wasn't in the, in, the manga, in, in the manga, I guess. No. Mm. The part that was in the manga was Joe basically being in uh, some kind of like uh, underground boxing, but it was very brief. I see. So it wasn't that important as this guy makes it sound to. No, I see. it was mostly just, oh, since you know how Joe basically lost, uh, was basically a uh, kind of a laughing stock of the boxing world, so... Dompe basically decided to close the boxing gym, and Joe pretty much said, "Oh, I already knew that was going to happen, so I'm just going to join a underground boxing jet, underground boxing group." See. Uh, okay. Okay. So, so some might say, "Just skip the filler uh, episodes," and here's what makes this even worse. Ashita no Joe. Uh, anime doesn't just have few episodes. Some of them are rel relatively self-contained and can just be ignored, but those are a, mi a tiny minority. For the most part, original material material meets us in with canon, at times completely ignoring the way the plot unfolds in the manga for the sake of filler coming in more smoothly. However hard they try though, there's always a clear contrast because whoever, whoever wrote the filler didn't have an ounce of writing talent compared to Asao Takamori. Filler is meaningless 
a meandering pointless and it moves nothing forward and at best reiterates previous material instead of moving forward it downgrades much give us some examples uh, it downgrades uh, the characters to acting like generic archetypes uh, it dumps them down by trying to make their cold conclusions seem like the most shocking revelations i strongly believe that there is no alteration that had a positive impact and there's a fuckload of alterations that build up until a shit fantastic climax that is Carlos versus Joe arc so did you feel like the Carlos versus Joe arc was better in the manga than in the anime mm, I would I would say it depends on I would say in the first series it was good in the second series well both the first and second series I enjoyed as far as the what's better I can't really say I suppose the biggest difference is in the manga Joe and Carlos fought in two matches as opposed to just one full match. I see. So when when you do get to see the canon though, Ashira no Joe sh- shows what it could have been. A story that still has few analogs in anime. A realistic and sincere story about about a dregs of society fighting for a better tomorrow. despite their tragic yesterdays it's not a drama that makes you feel good because there's no escapism to it it doesn't round off the edges of the real world instead slamming you right against those edges and showing you how heartbreaking and hopeless things can be oh, however it does this not to make you feel depressed but to motivate you to push on forward to improve yourself to strive for better things instead of wallowing in the problems or trying to ignore them joe and many other characters constantly have to deal with problems one worse than the other and none of them are exactly equipped to handle them joe himself is a delinquent like no like no uh like no another okay uh and often who constantly moved around and had to defend uh the only thing he had left his pride in his fists the result of this upbringing is that he's terrible at normal social interactions compromise is not in his dictionary and he lives his life scamming others and spending his nights wherever he can okay so it's basically explaining the plot so let's skip a bit yeah um okay another occasional strong point of the show is its presentation One of the biggest advantages anime has over manga is that you can get to hear the characters and you get to see their acting and movements in more detail which in right in the right hands can add to a lot of intricacies. Well I I, I did feel um, in the action sometimes sometimes in the manga like I had to go back and look at the to be fair I was reading this on my phone. Um so I had to go back and look at the panels of it to see what that punch and this punch did which i didn't feel like in the anime of course yeah no so so you get to hear the characters so voice actors in particular have to be the highlight of the entire anime in terms of representation it's incredible how much passion comes out to their dialogue how they manage to capture emotion blah 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 uh one thing that that always stood out to me it's just one scene where the realest thing happens and joe actually cries it feels like he's genuinely sobbing while trying to hold himself i think he's probably talking about the scene um at the park um where no, like what you don't think that talking about the uh after when he joe gets released from prison where he has that party uh, kind of- yeah i see i see I uh, so I can't remember whether the, the scene where cuz there's a, there's another scene where he's crying later. Right? Um, uh yeah. But no, uh, no no but 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 here he's talking about when he's putting it off front. Yeah. I see. And that that yeah that was the moment, yeah. Um so you get to hear that this is a man who's used to putting up a tough front 
crying himself after possibly the first moment uh, of genuine happiness in his uh, miserable life. You know, yeah, like, um, yeah. I mean, when feminists say that, like, uh, men should cry some or something, well, um, yeah, they, they kind of ignore that uh, there's such a thing as manly tears <laughs> in anime or something. I don't know. Uh, so Tanji is similarly just fantastic. It's a travesty that both his and Joe's VAs uh, never participated in voicing any uh, any other anime than Ashita no Joe. That's, that's pretty sad. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, so yet while I, I will praise the voice acting for managing to de- depict emotional outbursts with rare sincerity, I can't help but feel that Nezaki's overly dramatic dramatic presentation often hurts the story. When it hit it when it hits, it's great. Nezaki has a sense for dramatic flair and it helps the moments that are meant to be exaggerated or shocking. But sometimes you need the opposite of that. When seemingly dreadful things happen in with little flash, it makes a point. Bad shit can bad sh- bad shit can happen at any time, anywhere, to, and to anybody. You are not special, and there's nothing to uh, to say that tomorrow you won't become just another number in a small box on a piece of paper, showing how many people died this year. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't give any examples. So yeah. Um, yeah, he just mentioned, so he, he's saying it's hard to say how much the flaws I mentioned will impact one, one's experience, but he doesn't give any examples, so I don't know. It um, feels yeah. like he absolutely despises the show, but loves the manga, so. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, so... Anything else you want? To, I guess or what you said you would give it a nine on a Nine out of ten, right? Both series and the manga. So, um, the anime has eight point point two nine on um on the anime, yeah, obviously. Um, and the manga. Uh, so um, well, that was just uh, season one because the scores for season one and two are separate. But um, season two is probably higher because. The people who are going to rate season two are going to be the ones who liked season one, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And um, the manga is 8.94. So, what would I give it? Would I give it a 9? I guess what stops you from giving it a 10? Mm. Yeah. Not really sure. I suppose something that they could do is, well, maybe they may dra- it may drag the story, but they could explore a bit more about. They introduced sort of the tragedies of war and Dragon Kim, but they after a while they kind of just dropped it. Yeah, yeah. I I don't think um, I I didn't feel like. Um, Joe's answer to that uh, amounted to much more than I can punch better than you, so I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I guess, I mean, is, is it something about the scale of the story not being large enough or something like that? Because I kind of feel like um, a lot of people have like um, uh, like a limit that they can give to like a, some, a kind of story. So this is a sports manga. So, I'm not going to give a, a sports manga a score higher than this, or something like that. Like, it has to be like another genre, like a space opera or something, for me to give it a higher score. Or like, uh, hmm. the, the stakes need, need to be higher, like, uh, um, like, I don't know, like the whole universe, you know, must be involved in some way, or something like that. Like, or maybe the, like the scale, I don't know, I'm repeating myself, but you get the point. Yeah. Um, do you feel like it's something like that? The reason why you can't give it a 10 out of 10? Or uh, maybe um, not? It's, I don't know, it's a bit hard to explain, but it's it's not, it's close to perfect, but I wouldn't call it perfect. Is there anything you could call perfect? Yeah, that is a good point. I mean, um, well, is there anything you could 
give it a 10 out of 10, I guess. Is there, is there anything you, you would give a 10 out of 10? <laughs> uh, it's pretty the cliched answer, but it's a galactic heroes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, people laughed at me when I said that as well. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, what, 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 can, what can we do? Um, right. So, yeah, I would also give it a 9 out of 10. And again, again, I can't exactly explain why. So that's why I asked you. <laughs> why I can't give it a 10. Um, I don't know. I kind of, it's kind of like, um, it just felt a bit like it's just about Joe a lot. Like for, like, um, like one of the reviews we read, I think said that, um, like all the characters develop. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I really felt that. Um, I mean, they mm. do change and get their shit together, but hmm. I, I, I kind of feel like in the end, um, what you get is uh, just perspective, and that's and that's why the story needs to end. Yeah. Uh, and I guess the question is like, well, what's wrong with that? Um, <laughs> why, why can't you give it a ten out of ten? Still. Um, I guess I would have preferred it if it wasn't just his perspective. Like with um, with uh, Legend of the Galactic Heroes, it's not just one perspective, and I did like that. Uh, um, and I guess I guess uh, space battles uh, look more impressive than you know people punching each other. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, those fight scenes in Joe aren't are always exciting. Yeah, what what did you feel about the tactics, I guess, in those fights? Uh, I don't think there were many tactics. It was just Joe. Joe's tactic is attack, get up, and attack again. I mean, did you feel like um, there was too much of, like, uh, uh, Joe is, like, about to lose, but at the last moment, he comes up with a new move or something? Um, was there too yeah. much of that? I wouldn't say too much to that, but there's there's some of the fights that felt like that. But to be fair, Joe, I guess I kind of forgive it because Joe didn't really win all the time. How many times did you lose? Um... Uh, I would say with Rikishi and with Jose. So it's not <laughs> as much, but... Yeah, I guess it did count when he lost. Yeah, the few, the few times he did, he did lose, he did lose pretty badly. Uh, in the sense that um, he did lose a lot. Yeah, but I mean, not badly in the sense that, uh, yeah, you know, you you get what I mean. Yeah, um, I know what you mean exactly. Hmm, I mean. Um, would it have been better if he had lost more, I wonder? Mm. Mm. It's hard to really say. I mean, he didn't just lose the boxing match. He also lost a lot. For example, when he went to prison, that was a loss. Where he, or Kishi died, that was a major loss. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did, uh, yeah. It, it wasn't just uh, like a glory match or something. Uh, I do you want to call that? Um, yeah, a good drama. Would you have liked to see more romance in the story, or would that have mm. derailed it? It would have derailed it. And plus, I don't think Joe would care so much about romance. Even in the manga, he didn't really care. I remember this one scene where. Dompe basically said, hey, Joe, Norco cared about you. She had feelings, and he basically said, those feelings have no place in boxing. Yeah. Uh, I guess, I guess, uh, uh, the way that, uh, I don't know, he wouldn't be a, 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 an incel, but uh, or I guess in modern parlance, he would be like a, like a volcel or something, I don't know, a voluntary celibate. So basically, yeah. <laughs> just celibate. I see. Um, yeah, I guess it's nice to see a protagonist who is not a simp. Um, 
Uh, yeah. Well, I guess. What about? Uh, I guess one complaint which people might have, modern people who are wrong, I guess, uh, would be that, uh, like, um, there are not enough uh, f- female characters, and whenever the female characters talk, they're talking. About, I think the feminists have some kind of uh, a, a quote-unquote test. Um, they are like, if um, um, if a if female characters do not talk uh, about anything other than the male characters for at least three times, then it fails that their test or something. But oh, yeah, uh, I've heard about that. But I guess if it fails their test, uh, then it means uh, it must be good. Uh, <laughs> so um, yeah, I guess. What did you think about the? I really hate saying that uh, phrase, but uh, the portrayal of women in the anime. Well, in show. <laughs> referring to the previous point of Yoko, I think it's realistic. But realistic does not need to be positive, I guess. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, it's not a totally total negative either. I mean, um, I th- I thought that uh, she was best girl because Noriko is just boring. <laughs> yeah, uh, but that's that's maybe just me. Okay. I mean, and the fact is, Yoko, he sort she sort of uh, indirectly supports Cho in her own way. Hmm. Yeah. I mean. Uh, do you think that um, that Joe should have accepted? I mean, he she basically does, yeah. Though though she basically leads to his death as well. I mean, hmm. <laughs> I guess. Um, um. Yeah, I mean, both uh, Dan Pei and Yoko tried to help um, to help. Um, um, Joe and Joe wasn't that kind to them, but it's not like Joe was um, wrong uh, about them either, right? It's not like Joe was yeah, wrong exactly. about uh, about Dan Pei just wanting to. Well, like the main the main reason why that Dan Pei was with um, was with Joe was because he's good at bo- good at boxing, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and yeah, we you, you already talked about what uh, what uh, Joe had to say about Yoko. <laughs> um, yeah, K- kind of a weird ha- hairstyle though she has got. I always thought. Um, yeah, kind of a wide forehead. I thought. Uh, anyway, who cares? Um, anything else to add, George? Uh, I think that's about it. We saw. I think we said all we need to be said. Nice. Um. So let's see if I can figure out how to kick out Craig. Uh. Yeah. So anybody who listens, who listened to or skipped to this part of the video, thank you for listening. <laughs> thank you for listening. <laughs>